In this video, we're going to take a look at the Insert Edge Loop tool in Maya 2013. Um, it's a really handy tool uh, to use both when you're creating hard surface or mechanical models, uh, like uh, vehicles or weapons or um, buildings. Uh, and it's also good when uh, uh, you're uh, modeling organic shapes like characters. So let's take uh, a look at uh, how this tool works. Uh, I've got a polygon cube here that I'm uh, just uh, selecting and uh, I'm just making sure up here that my polygons uh, menu set is selected and that gives me access to the edit mesh menu and this is where we find our insert edge loop tool. Uh, so I'll open the tool settings uh, using the little option box button just here at the end and you'll see that that opens up here on the right hand side of the screen. So I've got um, a little description here. It says to create a new path of edges across a mesh, click an edge and drag. Now this is directly related to the default setting, which is uh, just here under maintain position, relative distance from edge. Uh, so what this is doing is uh, if I click and drag using the uh, left mouse button on any edge on this object, it will create a new set of edges positioned uh, where these dotted green lines are. So I can move the position of uh, the edge loop uh, placement along anywhere along this edge. So I can go right down to the end um, or anywhere in between like this. So when I let go of the mouse it creates a new set of edges. Um, so this is resulting in the original polygons um, around these sides of the cube being split into two polygons. So what this is doing is adding geometry to our object and that allows us to change the shape of the object. So uh, if I turn the tool off and I just select this edge for example here, um, you'll notice that the tool automatically switches the object to edge mode. So basically when you click on the edges they select like this. Um, if I grab this edge and move it up, you can see I can I can create a slightly more complex shape than the original cube that I had. So this is sort of a way that we can add geometry um, and the extra geometry allows us to refine or um, increase the detail of the object that we're uh, building. So um, let's have a look at some of those other settings. Uh, I can go back up to the edit mesh menu um, or because I've just used a tool it's got a temporary icon just here for that tool so I can just click over here and, and bring it back. Um, so you can see there now that um, if I click uh, using the same settings if I click here the new resulting edge loop will actually follow the shape of the object now that I've um, kind of added this little peak so you see this new edge, instead of just cutting straight across, it's actually following the shape um, of the object. Okay. Uh, now, in uh, older versions of the software, um, usually this tool would only function across uh, four-sided polygons, which meant that if you had a triangle or um, a polygon with more than four sides, uh, the edge loops would, uh, or the edges, the new edges would cut across any four-sided polygons but would then uh, stop when they hit um, a polygon with either less or more than four sides. Um, in this version I don't believe it actually works like that. Uh, so to kind of get a bit of an idea uh, of whether or not that's actually going to function uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge two vertices together like this. Um, now I will be doing a video on, on, on the uh, different merge options. Um, so don't worry too much about what I've just done. But uh, just keep in mind that what I've got now is on this side of the object I've got two four-sided polygons. So I've got one here and one here. And I've got two triangles now here and here. Uh, so 
in older versions of the software, uh, basically, if I tried to cut uh, through this edge just here, because I've got a triangle here, it would not cut across the triangle. So uh, it would basically start here. Let's uh, let's try it. Um, I'll just grab the uh, the tool again. So edit mesh insert edge loop tool. Um, so if I click on this edge, because these two polygons here are four sided, it's going to cut through like that. So the edge you click on, it looks for the opposite edge across a four sided polygon. So there's one here and there's one here. When it gets to that edge, um, it cuts through. When it gets to that edge, it looks for the next opposite edge and so on. And that's how it loops right around the object. So the issue with the, uh, with the older software uh, was that um, with a triangle, it wouldn't know which edge was opposite. So it wouldn't cut across. It would basically just stop. Um, now you can see that that's happening here like that. So when I click on this edge, it won't cut through because it doesn't know whether it should connect to this edge here or this edge here. Now, on occasion, I have found that in this version, it does cut through. And what it was, what I found it doing sometimes is it's actually just ignoring the fact that there are triangles here and it cuts right through the object. Um, so just keep in mind that um, when you're using this tool, sometimes you'll find that the edges stop like this and they don't cut and join sort of all the way around the object and then sort of join up back where you clicked. Um, they'll actually stop part way around. And that means you've got either a triangle or you've got, uh, you know, maybe a five or six sided polygon. Um, now, of course, now that I've cut an edge in like this, what that's resulted in is this triangle is actually now a four-sided polygon. Um, and uh, even though technically it still looks like a triangle, the uh, the sides are actually indicated by the number of edges that uh, that are created so uh, or that uh, form that polygon. So I'm just going to go back to my select tool and we can use this to actually count the, um, the, the, the sides. So I've got one here, you can see that highlighting red. So that's one, two, three, four. So even though this is triangular in shape, it actually has four sides. I can now try cutting across this, uh, this polygon. Now I do find that there are inconsistencies with this tool um, as far as what it's doing. Um, if I deselect the object like this, okay, so I just right click and go back to object mode and click in an empty spot in the grid. Um, I can then go back into that insert edge loop tool and that's sort of just kind of reset it. Um, we can try cutting across some of these, um, these edges. Now you'll see here that these two edges are still selected. What happens is sometimes this tool makes the selections get stuck. So if this happens, what you do is you turn off the tool, just go back to your select tool, okay, and just right click and make sure you're in edge mode, in this case, because they're edges. Drag a box across the whole object, like this, and then just deselect. And that usually unsticks that selection, like that. And then you can go back to your tool and, um, and continue on. So I'll just switch the tool back on. So I want to try and cut across um, across this shape. Because it's a, a, a four-sided polygon, basically I should be able to cut directly across it. So if I click uh, here, for example, you'll notice that it's not cutting across. It's not even cutting across this one, which it should. Um, so there are inconsistencies with the way that this tool functions. Basically, this is a four-sided polygon this is and so is this all the way around um, to here and this is as well okay um, so there's no real reason why this shouldn't have actually cut and followed the shape all the way around um, so it doesn't seem to function correctly every time um, if I undo that cut just deselect those edges and 
we'll try another um, section. If I cut here, you can see that that's actually cutting around. So it's basically traveling all the way around here and then cutting through here. Now you'll notice there that it's actually um, rejoining back up with the, um, the edge where I clicked. And in order to do so, it's actually split a new edge in here. Now that's something that um, I didn't generally see happening with older versions of the software. Um, so it's possible that this, uh, this version has been adjusted slightly to, um, to, to kind of perform those little extra cuts where it needs to. Um, so basically what's happened here is we've now got three four-sided polygons in here. Okay, we've got one here, one here, and one here. Um, so what it's doing is basically um, it's sort of uh, auto-correcting um, itself. So you can see there that that edge loop cut in with no problem, but the edge loop across this direction, um, across here, just wouldn't go in. Um, I found that the older versions uh, of the software, it used to handle that a little bit better. Um, it didn't used to do this sort of auto correction as much, but um, it would definitely have cut across that other polygon without any issues. Um, so just bear that in mind. There are some slight irregularities sometimes with this tool. Um, or it can give you slightly unexpected results. Okay, let's have a, couple, uh, a quick look at a couple of the other settings. Um, whoops, I'll just uh, turn that tool back on. Um, the other main setting that you'll be using is this multiple edge loops value just here. Um, basically below here, you can see we've got number of edge loops um, and this number. I think normally it defaults to two like this. And basically what this will do is uh, it will add multiple edge loops like this. So uh, rather than clicking and dragging along an edge to position, what this will do is automatically space multiple edge loops along the edge that you click. Uh, so in this case, I added two edges. And you see that um, the edge that I clicked on, on along here, those edges are spaced evenly along that uh, edge. And once again, they'll follow the shape all the way around the object like this. Uh, you'll notice up here, uh, just here, however, where where they've looped around. Um, basically, uh, it hasn't done an auto-correcting edge through here. So this has resulted in a triangle. Um, it didn't add uh, a little diagonal like this to, to kind of keep them all four-sided. So yet again, that's one of those little sort of irregularities. Um, so that's basically how this works. So um, if you set the edge uh, number of edge loops here to one, you can actually find the middle of a polygon by clicking on the edge. So even if I click over here like this, it's going to place that cut right down the middle of the, the edge. And it basically splits the polygons right down the middle. So that's actually really handy if you're trying to find the middle um, point of an edge or um, you're trying to split polygons evenly in half. Assuming, of course, that the polygon edges are sort of parallel to one another, like this. Uh, so that's really, really, um, it's, a, it's a really, really good tool. Um, to give you an idea of um, sort of the, the, the equivalent, um, uh, an equivalent process of, of doing edge loops, um, in the channel box for our for a cube, let's say we've got a cube here, and I need to add divisions along this edge. Okay, um, with the cube tool, if I've just created a cube, technically what I could do is come into the inputs and um, increase. Uh, that's probably going to be the depth. I would say maybe the depth. Yep. So I could add edge. Basically, uh, in this case, these are referred to as subdivisions, but they're still just edge loops. Um, so you can create edge loops initially on your objects like this. Um, but basically, that's exactly the same result as taking your cube and using the insert edge loop tool, uh, setting the uh, 
maintain position to multiple edge loops and then setting this number in order to get the same number it's four edge loops like this and if I click here it's going to give me basically the exact same result so you can see there that there are different ways of doing things that give you the same end result um, you know the other way of doing that would be to um, create um, a polygon plane like this so that's just a single polygon and if I extrude this um, if I select it and go to edit mesh extrude oops. I can set the number of divisions here to four, oops, like that. And um, the thickness I think needs to go up like that. So you can see there, um, that's also done basically a similar thing. That actually needed an extra, um, an extra division. So you can see the division terminologies are slightly different. They do a slightly different thing. Um, but that basically, um, if I just rotate that around, you can see that that's done the exact same thing. So I've got the exact same shape three different ways using um, three different tools. Um, so the insert edge loop tool was definitely the quicker of those three methods. Um, and that's why it comes in handy. So it's great for um, for you know, adding little details like knuckles on fingers and, um, you know, knee joints and, and things like that. So um, definitely uh, give the insert edge loop tool a go. Uh, it's definitely handy. Um, it's nice and quick, but just keep in mind that on occasion it will um, produce results which might be a little bit unexpected. Um, and also keep in mind that on occasion it makes... Um, the edges that it selects uh, get stuck, so you have to kind of double check and um, kind of manually go through and deselect those edges um, if they do get stuck. So uh, with that said, I'll leave this video here and I'll see you next time.